Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this Back to Basics video, we're going to check out the Wave modifier. Let's get into it. The Wave modifier is a fairly simple modifier. For our use in this video, I've added a 40 by 40 grid. I'll add a Wave modifier to it. By default, this is the effect you get with the Wave modifier when we play our animation. Let's take a look at some of the settings we have available. First off, we have the motion setting. The motion of the wave modifier moves in the X and Y direction, with its height in the Z direction. You have a choice for your motion to go in the X and Y direction as it is now, just the X direction, just the Y direction, or neither. The next option is cyclic. This option determines if your waves will act in a repeating fashion as they are now, or as a single wave. By default, the displacement for the wave modifier happens just in the positive Z direction. However, you can choose to have the displacement of the waves go along the face normals of your object. To demonstrate this, I've added a cube. Here we can see the waves are happening only in the positive Z direction. However, if I choose along normals, with none of the normals selected, the wave action stops on this cube. However, I could choose to enable the wave motion along the X normals, or the Y normals, or the Z normals, or all three. The falloff option allows you to determine how quickly the waves lose their energy. When falloff is set to zero, the waves will continue to the edge of the model. However, if we increase this amount, we can have the waves dissipate before they reach the edge of the model. The height setting determines how high on the displacement axis the waves will go. The width option determines the distance between the waves. The narrowness value determines how wide or narrow each given wave is. The higher the narrowness value, the more narrow each wave will be. The lower the narrowness value, the wider and smoother each wave will be. You can use vertex groups to also affect your waves. Here I'll add a vertex group to this mesh and assign several different values. Here you can see the vertex group values. Assigning this group to our wave modifier, we see how each section is affected by the vertex group. Where the vertex group was zero, it's not affected at all, and it staggers up with each value until it's fully affected here at the bottom. We can of course invert the influence of the vertex group by clicking the double arrow button. Up until now, all of the waves have been radiating from the center point of our object. However, it doesn't have to be this way. You can shift the X and Y position of the center point using the start position X and Y. If you'd rather use an external object to do the same thing, you can do that as well. In this case, I'll add an empty. And I'll set the start position object to this empty. Now as I move the empty, its X and Y position are used to determine the start position of the waves. Note that the Z position of this object has no effect on the waves. If you don't want your waves to start immediately, you can use the time offset to set this. So if you want your waves to start at frame 50, you would enter 50 in offset. If you would like your waves to continue indefinitely, set the life to zero. Otherwise, the number in life will determine how many frames your waves will continue. So here, if I set life to 50, and my offset to 50, my waves will start at frame 50 and continue until frame 100. The damping setting acts as a padding at the end of your lifespan. So in this case, with an offset of 0 and a lifespan of 50, 
and a damping of 10. That means the waves will stop being generated at frame 50 and then take 10 frames to dissipate. However, we could extend this to 50. And now the waves will start at frame 0, stop generating at frame 50, and then take 50 frames to dissipate. The speed option controls the overall speed of the waves. If you'd like the waves to move inward instead of outward, you can change the speed to a negative. You will need to set an offset for negative speed to work. This will be the last frame that generates the negative waves. Finally, you can apply a texture to your waves. From this texture section, you can create a new texture or select an existing one. In this case, I'll create a new one. To edit it, either click on the Texture tab or click the Texture Properties button. In this case, I'll just create a clouds texture. At the moment, it's hard to make out the clouds texture. So what I'm going to do is add a subdivision surface modifier to this object. And I'm going to move it before my wave modifier. This way, my wave modifier has a lot more geometry to work with. You can set the coordinate system that the texture will be applied to your object. Your options to apply texture are the local coordinates, the global, object coordinates, or UV coordinates. I hope this run through of the wave modifier has been helpful. You can really create some interesting effects with it. I hope this inspires you to create something awesome. If you're new to the channel and you're enjoying the content, please hit that subscribe button. Thanks for taking time out of your day to watch the video, and I'll see you next time.